I found this piece of steel laying on the ground near some railroad tracks hiking with my family. I'm not sure exactly what its purpose is, but we're going to try to make a sword out of it. I will say I dropped this piece of steel so many times that I put a blooper reel at the end for you. The first thing I'm going to do is straighten the spring out with my rounding hammer. Just try to get a nice straight billet. You see right here I did switch over to using some horse hoof nippers. These are basically giant toenail clippers. Those actually held this piece of steel better than any other pair of tongs that I had in the shop, which is kind of humorous, but this particular spring has a notch in the end of it that those nippers fit perfectly. You can see here, all I'm doing is stretching the billet out lengthwise and widthwise. I'm using a rounding hammer. I'm kind of flipping it from one side to the other. I'm really going to see if I can stretch this thing out long enough to get a sword out of it. Here we are. We're going to forge in the tip. We're going to stretch it out, try to equally hammer on both sides of the tip. We're going to forge it to a point. We want to get as much out of this steel as we possibly can. We don't want to waste any of it. You want to make sure that you don't create a cold shut in the end. So basically you could get what's called a fish mouth. If you don't hammer the end of the sword or the end of a knife properly, you'll end up with two points uh, at the very tip that won't really forge together. So you want to manipulate the material slowly and draw it out to the point of the sword. It's looking pretty good at this point. After I get it drawn to a point, I'm going to continue to flip it flat and start to thin it out at the same time. You're slowly moving the material in all the different directions trying to achieve a nice symmetrical shape. This is starting to look really good. It appears that I will have enough material to make a sword. Now I'm going to forge out the tang of the sword. This is going to be a hidden tang sword with a screwed on pommel nut. So we're just going to stretch this out, get as much length as we can. After forging the rough shape, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the profile and grind in some rough bevels. I'm going to leave this completely forged so it, the end product will show quite a few hammer strikes. We took it as close to completion forging with the hammer as possible. Like I said, we wanted to keep as much material as we could out of that spring. We're going to move right into heat treatment. First thing I'm going to do is light up the forge and throw my chain in there. I use this chain to preheat my oil. I think that it works really well. I've got a nice long tank so the chain's able to heat the oil all the way to the bottom. There we go. Try to put that flame out quickly. Now I'm going to pass this blade through all the way from front to back continually. This process takes a good five or eight minutes until I get a nice even heat that you saw there. And then we go in for the quench. I'm doing an intermittent quench here so that we can kind of get that springiness back into the steel. Right after this quench, I throw it in the kitchen oven for 425 for two hours to temper it back to a nice springy state. Wire wheel the flats. Now we're looking right at the guard material here. Let's go ahead and mill this slot. This is going to be the part that mates right up to the end of the sword. I use an end mill slightly smaller than the width of the sword and then I'll hand fit it to the sword itself. Then I'll go ahead and drill out all of the material where the tang will sit inside of the handle material. We need to create some threads for that pommel nut so we're going to go ahead and make a round tang here and thread it. Try to use a standard thread pitch for this. When making the pommel nut, I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole first, right there, and tap the hole for the tang of the sword. And then, after the tapping process goes smoothly, I'll go ahead and further shape this pommel nut. This is possible to do without a lathe. You can do this on a drill press and some files. I'm not going to get too fancy with this pommel nut, but it is really nice to have a lathe to do this sort of work. Go ahead and part your piece off, flip it around, clean it up with some files, polish it with some sandpaper, and let the lathe do all the work for me. Work smarter, not harder. 
I did decide that I wanted a dark blade, so I threw it in my etching tank. This is ferric chloride and distilled water. We're going to put the guard on first. Our piece of ebony next. Quilted curly maple next. These are stabilized, by the way. Another piece of contrasting ebony. Oh, look at that. I forgot to put my spacer materials in. I'm going to have a black spacer uh, on the front and the back of this handle. So you saw me take the maple back off. Put the spacer on, put the maple back on, add another spacer. Now we'll add the last piece of ebony that I already have counterboard for my pommel nut. Then you can screw that pommel nut on. The pommel nut will suck everything together. Make it nice and tight for the glue up process. I did use a two-part epoxy, glued it all up, and used the pommel nut to hold it nice and tight. Here I've gone ahead and drawn out the rough shape of the handle that I'm going to grind in on the grinder. You can see I've got a flare on the back and a flare on the front. The sides are nice and flat and true, so I can lay it on its side and use this contact wheel to go ahead and cut in the sides. This was actually a tricky cut right here because you certainly didn't want to cut into the actual handle portion. You just wanted to cut the angular portion. And then I rounded everything off with these files, bringing it to a nice symmetrical shape. Now for my absolute favorite part of every knife or sword build, the part where you apply the oil and get to see the grain pop for the first time. Yes. Tell me that's not satisfying. That marbled ebony, the stabilized maple together, got a couple black liners in there. It's absolutely gorgeous. Fantastic. I will put several coats of oil on this over the next couple days. You'll see that in the pictures here in a moment, the difference between the finish right now and then the finish after I do build up coats and then I sand it back and do a couple finish coats of tongue oil. One thing to note here, I did also etch the pommel nut in ferric chloride acid so it matches the blade and the guard. Loving that. Here's the finished knife, guys. You can see the rough forged finish on the blade. The bevels came out nice handle came out absolutely amazing it fits perfect in the hand it's excellent for thrusting it chokes right up on your hand perfectly on that front guard the pommel nut is a great skull crusher and here's the bloopers look at how many times I dropped this piece of steel I just could not get it figured out until I started using those nippers if you guys enjoyed this video please don't hesitate to give me a thumbs up and if you haven't yet subscribed also, click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content. Thanks, guys.